Hey guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods. This is part nine of the IS300 1UZ swap. Hopefully this will be the last one for the swap. In the last video, if you watched it, I talked about having an issue with the clutch. At cold, the engagement point of the clutch would be very low to the floor, like a quarter inch off the floor. And then as I would drive, the engagement point on the pedal would rise to like two thirds of the way up on the pedal. And I did a lot of adjustment with that. And if I raised it any more to make it better when cold, it would actually slip when it warmed up. I reached out to XAT Racing because they're the ones who provided me with the bell housing clutch, uh, throughout bearing and all that stuff. They thought I already upgraded my clutch master cylinder, which I didn't. So they recommend upgrading to this Tilton three quarter inch bore master cylinder. It's possible that my old master cylinder may be going out. It does have a quarter million miles on it. So maybe some fluid leaks past the seal. So if you're gonna do this swap, or if you just have an old master cylinder, this is probably a good upgrade for you anyway. I had a similar experience in my Supra where I put a stage four clutch in it and that kept blowing out the master cylinder. I was putting OEM Toyota master cylinders in that car. And I guess the increased pressure kept blowing out the seals. So I had to upgrade the master cylinder. So whether you're doing this swap or you're just gonna be upgrading the clutch in your IS300 with a 2J, this might be an upgrade that you wanna do. So it shouldn't be that hard of an install. The kit that I got from XAT Racing comes with everything that you need to do this install. I'll have a link for that in the description down below if you wanna get the kit for yourself. So let's get into it. To try to not make a mess with this, I'm gonna use my brake bleeder to suck out the fluid from here so I make less of a mess. This is even better than a turkey baster. I've always wondered what the little black float is in these Toyota master cylinders. So if anyone in the comments can tell me what the hell that is, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, now that we've got the float out, we'll disconnect this line. This goes to the XAT racing throw out bearing. Now that we have the clutch line removed from the clutch master cylinder and it's drained of fluid, we can remove it from the car. Pretty simple. Let's go inside the car. To make things easy, you're going to want to remove some plastic, remove the panel here, this kick panel thing, and uh, whatever you call the piece of plastic that goes here, remove those covers. So come right in here. Very hard to see. But you see those two nuts? Those are the nuts we need to remove to get the master cylinder out. There's a cotter pin and another pin that we also have to remove. You can see right there, there's a pin or a bolt that goes through the clevis of the clutch master cylinder that attaches to the pedal. And then a cotter pin secures it. We gotta remove the cotter pin, remove the pin, then the two nuts. A set of needle nose pliers should allow you to easily get the cotter pin out. Then I like to take a long flathead screwdriver to push on that pin to get it most of the way out. Try to pry it the rest of the way out of the pedal. Kind of hard to do while holding a camera. There she went. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. All right, now we can get the two nuts. So you can see I'm on the top one right now. Very easy to get to if you have extensions and all these plastics out of the way. And now with my extensions, I am on the lower nut. See, very simple to get to with all this plastic out of the way. All right, got the pins and the two nuts removed. Okay, here is the clutch master cylinder kit we got from XAT Racing. Comes with an upgraded or larger clutch master cylinder, a reservoir that you need to install, a new clevis. I like that it comes with a clevis because when I did this on the Supra, I had to make my own with that kit. And of course it comes with an adapter for the firewall. Now we will have to bench bleed this, but I think the first thing that we'll do is let's just get that adapter mounted to the firewall and then we'll bench bleed this and put it in. To install the studs, I'm just using the double nut method where you tighten the two nuts against each other and then you can install the studs. These shorter studs are gonna face the master cylinder like that. And these longer studs are gonna go on the back and those will go through the firewall. Here's what I'm gonna try to do to get the adjustment kind of close on the first try. Hope we don't run into any issues with this, but I wanna try to get the length 
of this from the firewall to the end of the clevis, about the same from my old one to my new one. And it looks like this one's gonna have to be like all the way threaded in. I hope we don't run into any adjustment issues with this, but that's what I'm gonna do to start off. Alrighty, let's get this thing in. All right, there we go. Got the two studs coming through. Just gotta get the nuts on using those extensions. All right, got both nuts on, no problem. Okay, so I got this clevis installed and there was a bit of an issue with the one we got in the kit. When they manufactured it, they had it extend way out here and it was bent. And I actually couldn't thread the rod in all the way. So I cut it off, which actually is a good thing. It was a little bit too long. And I found a jam nut for it. The kit did not include a jam nut. It's a 5 16th by 24 thread. And according to my markings here, we have this master cylinder about the same length as this one for starters. So accounting for the spacer here, it's uh, lining up pretty close. So the next thing we're going to do is install the reservoir on here, which is very simple, just gets clamped on, and then we will bench bleed it. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. All right, time for brake fluid. We're using Modal 5.1, and this is what I have been using. So the people saying, oh, I wonder if your brake fluid's old or crappy or has a bunch of water in it. It was brand new Modal 5.1. That's not what was causing my problem before with my old clutch. So to minimize the mess, to bench bleed this, I have my brake bleeder kit hooked up to here. Now you could, um, circulate this hose back into the reservoir, but I anticipate that that will make far more of a mess because my luck, it'll fling out and go all over the place. So we're gonna try to bench bleed it like this. Oh yeah, that's good stuff right there. Uh... Oh my. I would just do that. We're gonna put this master cylinder in now. The first thing we're gonna do is connect the AN line to this fitting here so it doesn't make a mess in the engine bay and totally destroy things. So depending on how you order the kit, you may or may not get this adapter fitting. Um, this is a dash three AN female fitting to a dash four AN male. And that's what you will need to connect this if you have the XAT um, clutch slave cylinder and throughout bearing combo. Before we tighten anything else up, I'm gonna see what the condition's like on the pedal and the clevis, see if it needs adjusted or not. Um, so yeah, we'll look at that. All right, change of plans. We took the reservoir off. It was just too much in the way of this top nut. Now, they're kinda, I guess there is two ways you could assemble this. You could assemble that adapter to the master cylinder and install it that way, and then get the nuts on the inside, or you can install the adapter to the firewall and then attach the master cylinder to the adapter. Before we tighten those nuts, we're gonna leave a little bit of play on this master cylinder, and hopefully we can get that clevis onto the clutch pedal and uh, make adjustments if we have to. So now we're gonna go into the car and connect it. All right, we got the clevis onto the clutch pedal, as you can see right there. Got the cotter pin in, and now it's time to put the reservoir back on. Tony is tightening the nuts on the other side of the firewall. Top nut's pretty simple. You can use a open end wrench to do that. But this bottom one, we've got a socket, 12 millimeter socket with a three inch extension on there. So I think if we need to adjust this, what we'll have to do, we'll have to leave these nuts on, but then take the nuts off from this piece on the inside of the firewall if we have to pull this off to adjust it. Um, Why don't you check that type, top one with this guy? I'll have to free you. Feels good to me. Okay.
All right, so thank you very much. Big thank you to Tony. Go. Big thanks to Tony. He's supposed to be helping, but right now he's being a nuisance. He tightened the nuts on the master cylinder, and I didn't think I need to show you, but we bled it. Um, if you're doing a project like this, uh, you should probably know how to bleed. But I'll tell you at least what we did. We first used my vacuum bleeder to suck out a lot of the fluid. And for the first couple minutes, it was just typical fluid and air coming out, nothing exciting. Then we switched to the traditional method where Tony was in the car, pumped the pedal a bunch of times and I cracked the bleeder. After about doing a few minutes of that, everything seemed normal. And then there was a giant cough of air um, that came out of the master cylinder. So do this pretty in depth. Just keep bleeding and bleeding and bleeding until you're 100% sure that there's no air. Um, Cause we were almost finished. And then we got a big burp of air. We did take the car out and I'm happy to report that this did fix my problem. The clutch engagement point was spot on when we made this the same length as the Toyota master cylinder. The engagement point is right about half, maybe slightly less than halfway up the pedal, cold and hot. So it wasn't changing with temperature like it was before. So whether my master cylinder was too small or it was just wearing out, going to this kit that I got from XAT Racing sure fixed my problem. So very happy about that. And pretty much at this point, I'm, I'm gonna say that this swap is done. There's a couple little tiny things that I can tweak and refine, but generally as this whole 1UZ swap project, it's essentially finished. And I'm super happy with the way that it drives. So now Brad and I just need to work on the tune a little bit and hopefully maybe in a month or so, we'll get my improved numbers on this. Dyno, quarter mile, fuel economy, corner weight. So look forward to that. Um, I'm gonna be very interested to see that information. So. Big thanks to XAT Racing for helping me out with this kit. I'll have a link in the description to this kit as well as their bell housing kit. Um, so thanks for watching this video. Hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Cut.